This is about in Arabian Nights. After I had written The Caliph's House and lived here in Morocco for a little while, I wanted to write another book about the country and the culture, really to show how Morocco is from the inside out, the way an Oriental would see it. And I think often Westerners mess up in Morocco and they can't understand it and they can't decipher it because they look at it straight on. And the way to understand the place is to do it in a zigzag way, starting in the middle and going all over the place and until you've built up this picture. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that the way to understand Morocco and indeed the Arab world is to look at it through its culture, through the body of stories that are a bedrock to society. Everyone's heard of Arabian Nights, al wa Layla, as they call them in the Arab world. But there are all kinds of other corpuses of work like Anta and Abla and Saif. And I grew up on those stories, like most Moroccan children do, because my father and my grandfather and everyone in my family were storytellers and obsessed with stories. And a lot of people watching this will probably know my father's work, Idris Shah. He spent his life um, making accessible to the West these huge bodies of stories, teaching stories that have been used across the East for thousands of years as a way, a matrix, to pass on ideas and values and information. So I started to look at Morocco through stories and I began to see that these stories are almost like a baton that are passed on from one generation to the next. The way that my father would tell me and my sister's stories at night, I found that I was doing the same thing to my kids. My father used to say that a story, a teaching story, was like a delicious piece of fruit, like a peach, he would say, and that the, the mouth-watering, succulent flesh on the exterior of the fruit um, served no purpose, no real purpose, except to allow the thing of real value, the stone inside it, to be passed on and nurtured. And as I used to go on about these stories to my kids, Ariane and Timor, they would say to me, but Baba, we love these stories, we love them, but we are bored by you trying to tell us how the stories work. And right there, right then, I remembered something which I thought was important. And it was my father telling me, Tahir, you don't have to know how the stories work, and that is the magical thing about them. You just have to tell them, and rather like a magical thing, they will sow themselves inside you, in your mind, and they will procreate, and they will reveal their magic to you. And so that's what I started to do. And I looked at Morocco through this unbelievable um, matrix that many people just think in the West is something for children, and it's something that drives me a little bit crazy sometimes because I realized by looking at a country like Morocco that stories are just as powerful to old men and adults as they are to the youngest children. Anyone who's visited Jamar Fna, for example, the great central square in Marrakesh, would have seen storytellers. And I encourage anyone to come here and to try to find stories and, as they do in Morocco, to find the story in your heart which is a wonderful little-known Berber tradition, something that I use as a thread throughout this book.